I'm Dr. Cindy Dupuy. I have a PhD in learning disabilities. I do diagnostic assessment, efficacy, and intervention. Uh, I'm also an adult with dyslexia and dysgraphia. Uh, my name is Kim Sharman. I've been working with kids uh, with dyslexia and dysgraphia and ADHD for the last 20 years, 15 years, and I have ADHD myself. Okay, so we're gonna flip the thing today and we're gonna try and do a shorter video, um, but we want people to take a look at some numbers and make their own analysis and then we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so what we've done is we've thrown in a WISC profile um, with all of the identifying information changed and um, no, I do not have a student named Huck, but that's a great name. And we want people to take a look at the numbers and see what you can pull out of the profile. So hit pause, look at the numbers as long as you want, and then when you're done, come back. Okay. So Kim, when you looked at that profile, what did you see? Well, it's not on the screen. Put it back up. Well, there it is. I took it down, but I say, wow, this kid is friggin' awesome at vocabulary and verbal comprehension. He obviously is going to be a very interesting kid for me to meet and work with because he's pretty sophisticated for a little eight-year-old kid. Um, but Where I would also see challenges and why. Oh my God! When the process, uh, the coding part, the 2.0 standard deviation um, sums up with his ability to digit span and coding. And I should know this if this has to do, and also block design is low. Would this be something to do with visual? Uh oh, am I going to say the wrong thing? Visual motor integration? Visual motor integration. So the coding subtest, yes, shows indications of visual motor integration, meaning you should suspect. Uh, I would say dysgraphia. Dysgraphia, okay. And then the block design, that's not, that's visual orientation. That's visual spatial. Visual spatial. Something's going on with there. I think that also can sometimes often be a part of dysgraphia. Yes. Yeah. So clinicians that are looking at this should immediately go to severe discrepancy tables in the testing manuals um, and look up because a 40 point difference between your verbal comprehension and your visual spatial should be a giant red flag. And then your 30 point difference between fluid reasoning and verbal comprehension is another giant red flag. Okay. So we have this super high verbal, verbal, verbal kid. Wait a second, fluid reasoning and verbal. So fluid reasoning, he got 79 and verbal comprehension is 99.7. Right. So like There's a me as a point difference between these two, and a 40 point difference between verbal comprehension and visual uh, spatial. So that, see, I wouldn't know to know that that's bad because it still says 80%, but for your, you're saying that's not right to have that variation so strong. This is a really, really unusual profile. So a 40 point discrepancy between verbal comprehension and visual spatial is going to occur in less than 1% of the population. As wow. an astronomically high um discrepancy okay um and occurs very very rarely in the population but oh, wait fluid reasoning is the ability to use your logic and reasoning yeah. um, as it applies to all different circumstances uh but he's so smart and that he has incredible Okay. Do you think that he is always using that internal dialogue for problem solving when he's doing the patterns? And it is there a possibility that his eye is not picking up the detail in the patterns? I see. So you're saying that's part with the the not seeing the detail of the patterns. Could it also be some ADHD there, even though you don't have any more information? Uh, right yes. Okay. Yes, there are reasons to suspect ADHD. Because you really would expect that his fluid reasoning would be as high as his comprehension. I would. I would. would. Is it yeah. mostly the same with most people with high verbal comprehension? No, but what I know of this kid and in my work with this student, I would have expected a stronger profile for this kid. 
a stronger um, fluid reasoning or just in general? The fluid reasoning would have expected to be in the 120 range. Really? Yeah. Given the way that he approaches problems, given the way that um, he thinks, the the ability to see relationships on that similarity subtest and draw correlations, I would have expected him to be able to apply those on the right. nonverbal tasks. And um, we're going to give it away. He actually has ADHD, um, but he didn't engage that same problem solving when he went in to go do the matrix reasoning. And so he made errors on easy items and then went on to get harder items correct. OK, but um, I just looked it up on the tables and a 40 point difference is 0.0 percent of the population. So the first place that you get um, less are like within 1% of the population is a 26 point discrepancy between verbal comprehension and, and visual spatial. So this is way, way whack. That's so interesting. Okay. okay. And then on the fluid reasoning, very, yeah. on the fluid reasoning, that large a gap tends to occur again in 0% of the population. And we start getting a gap at like within 1% of the population at around 26 points difference. So this is a really unusual, unusual profile. And most people would look at it and go, okay, so he's a smart kid, what's up? But the frustration level that comes from scoring in the 99.6 percentile um, down to the 25th percentile is infuriating for kids and they feel like they're stupid and they also okay. feel like they're smart and they don't understand why the gap is there. And I will tell you that it starts knocking down, even though they have a 99% in these other areas, it starts knocking down their self-confidence and they literally start telling themselves that they're stupid. Yeah. And I have to try to figure out a way to, to say no them. or yeah. not. Okay. The digit span um, is representative of the ADHD. Um, okay. Block design was the ability to mentally parse and um complete the items within the allowed time limits effectively and efficiently um he struggled when they started to be rotated so that knocked his his score down on that um but is that part of the dysgraphia too the rotating uh no that's that's more um orthographic processing visual spatial stuff so okay. but it's a really interesting profile it is. If you have questions, love to hear from you.